Well, folks, welcome back to The Contrarian Trader. This is Robert Desmond. It is Saturday, April the 10th, 2010. Folks, um, I had a mentor when I first got into the business, and what he used to tell me was, no good deed goes unpunished. Again, Bob, no good deed goes unpunished. I have to be honest with you. It took me a couple of weeks to figure out, with it going over and over in my head, over and over again, what did that mean? Well, what it means is that you can, be, you can do all the nice things for an individual, an organization, a company, whatever, and still you're sorry for it in the end because there's just no appreciation. Now, the poster child of the lack of appreciation in this country at this point in time is the United Auto Workers. Now, I'm pulling up a chart of Ford Motor Corp because I can't pull up a chart of General Motors because it's bankrupt. It's bankrupt. It would have gone out of business were it not for we the people, we the taxpayers. But we the people and we the taxpayers who stepped up and saved this company so that the United Auto Workers could still have jobs are now being sued by the United Auto Workers for half a billion dollars in health, wealth, welfare costs. They are suing General Motors, and in essence, as since we're the owners of General Motors, they're suing us because they don't believe they got enough out of us. This country is on a solid path towards a nightmare scenario. Now, we can take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we can take a look at the composite, the NASDAQ composite, and we can say, wow, we look like a really healthy market. You know what it is, but it's juiced. Wait till they take away a punch bowl. Wait till they have to start spiking up interest rates to cap inflation. And then you're going to see this market can just absolutely collapse. Now, last week, it was, I believe, on Thursday, you had the bond auction, a 10 year bond auction that went off. I mean, I was watching CNBC. You would have thought that uh, you had it, foreign investors just clamoring, banging down the doors buying up these bonds, which dropped the yield. Now, everybody expected the bond auction to go poorly, which would have spiked the year yield on the 10-year Treasury up above 4%. And once you get above 4%, you get into a danger zone, especially if it starts increasing rapidly, and then the stock market could correct. They did, the powers that be in Washington didn't want that to happen. Who stepped up to buy those bonds? No other than the Federal Reserve. Printing money and buying our own debt. It's called monetizing the debt. This is sowing the seeds for our demise for the next 20 years. Last week, the, week, the Friday before, we were jobless, uh, we, 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 we created new jobs, 162,000 new jobs. But of course, a third of them were part-time workers, census workers, and you need 125,000 jobs a month because of immigration and new, pe new people entering the workforce just to say that we're not losing jobs. So we didn't gain jobs in, in uh, last month. We actually lost jobs. The census data is skewing it, but of course the spin is we gain jobs. That's all the market wanted to hear, and it gave it a reason to go up higher. Last week you had initial jobless claims. In the face of that previous uh, employment data, rise unexpectedly to 18,000 new jobless claims at a uh, came in for a total of 460,000 new jobless claims. February borrowing. Let's take a look at the RTH. This is the retail holders of which are now short. February borrowing was down. Look at this thing. The retail holders is in a parabolic state right now. It's extreme overbought levels. And you have retail borrowing that's declined by 5.6%. That's, I believe that the dollar amount was like $11 billion. Less credit is out there in that month for, for, from the consumer to buy things. Yet, the RTH is breaking out. It's, it's at, it's at, it's at previous highs, at, at, at 2007 highs. This is when we went short back here. Now look at it. We're, just, we're shorting it again. Uh, for the life of me, I, 
I, I, I get the short-term picture of the market. I get it. It's free, cheap money. But what I don't get is the fact that people are so complacent and so unwilling to realize what is actually happening out there in the long term. Now, what we started doing this week is, because we're watching indexes such as this. This is the Baltic Dry Sea Index. This is basically measures the price of uh, shipping, international shipping. And if there's large demand, of course, they're going to have pricing power. If there isn't demand, you, they're not going to have pricing power. Now you look back here, back in 2007, it was off the charts, pricing power. Now, we broke trend back here. I brought this up on previous videos. And we still have yet to be able to get back to trend. And it looks like we could quite very well break down and come down lower. What is that telling us about about trade. What is that telling us? I'm telling you folks, we have crooks in Washington. We have crooks in Washington that are telling us that all is well. Hoping that we bunch of chicken littles are going to pay attention and all pretend that the sky is blue. And it is not. You have gold. We started opening up our, our inflation positions this past week. I sent out alerts to my subscribers. We are, we are now positioned for a long position in, I won't, I won't, I won't specify the names because it would stop out of my subscribers, um, in certain positions to get us long and protect our, our, our cash positions because we're waiting to get really short this market. We want to protect our cash positions from inflation, taking a bite out of it. So we're getting long of inflation hedges to protect ourselves. So please, if you want to learn what those are, Sign up for the 14-day free trial offer, okay? It's not going to cost you a penny. If you don't like it, cancel it. Uh, pending home sales last week, up 8.2%. That means more inventory is stacking up, yet interest rates are also going up. You have the Federal Reserve end at the end of March its purchase of mortgage-backed securities. It pressured up interest rates higher. It's undeniable. Interest rates are higher now in the 30-year, are the highest they've been since August of 2009. Undeniable. The 10-year bond, which I mentioned back here on these videos on YouTube, watch out for the 10-year bond. Unsustainable downtrend, double bottom, it's going higher. Sure enough, here we are. We consolidated at this 385 level, broke through. I made mention of it to my subscribers before it was even a comment on anybody's mouth on CNBC. Watch the 10-year bond. Sure enough, it pulled back after that treasury auction. We're going to double bottom here, and we're going to shoot up higher. Watch gold. Watch all of your, your heavy metal commodity plays. I'm not that excited about steel. I'm embarrassed on steel due to the fact that I think that China is a bubble waiting to happen. And I think the demand due to the real estate market over in China is for, for steel and copper is going to decline rapidly. So just uh, just be cautious of that of, uh, of those types of trades. I like gold, I like oil, um, those types of trades right now to protect ourselves. That's to the long side. Short side, we're, we're long, we're, we're getting short, we're building short positions in a number of uh, areas. We are long the U.S. dollar since back here when nobody else wanted it. It looks like the dollar is rolling over, we have a lower high here, more than likely. I'm going to send out a note to my subscribers that we're going to cover, uh, not cover, we're going to sell our UUP position and take profits because it looks as if the FXE, which is the Euro Trust, could possibly break out higher. Now, if we see that, we're going to, we're going to bail out on our, on, our, on our dollar position, take profits, and book it. And, but in terms of the, of, of, the, of the Europeans, they're in a lot of trouble. Uh, Germany's playing hardball, and rightly so, with Greece. Because if the EU collaborates with the IMF, steps in, and bails out Greece. It's going to say that the Eurozone cannot take care of its own. They needed to go outside to go to the IMF for help. That's a bad that's a big problem for the for the Euro. Secondly, if the Germans and the rest of the European Union do go in and help Greece, what's going to happen next is that you're going to have Ireland, Greece, Spain, Portugal. They're all going to they're going to all say, "Listen, I need a handout as well. We need a handout as well." And Right now, 
the benefit that the United States has, and Bernanke should be thanking the European Union for their nightmarish problems over there, is the fact that they're so much worse off than we are right now, we actually look good. Yet we're still sowing the seeds for our own demise in this country. So please, I beg of you, don't listen to these talking heads on CNBC. These thugs in Washington are, are, are robbing us blind. Robbing us blind. We're monetizing our debt. We are the biggest buyers at our own auctions for treasuries with printed dollars. It's going to be inflation out the wazoo. You need to listen to contrarians, the real traders out there. So please, sign up for the 14-day free trial offer. If you don't like it, sign up on your PayPal account and cancel it out. I don't want your credit card number. Go through PayPal. So that's it, folks. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email. and I'd be more than happy to answer them. And I hope that everybody has a great weekend and a great trading week. Bye-bye.